Between 2007 and 2017, the Melbourne Football Club endured one of the bleakest decades of any football club in recent memory. It was a period that yielded two wooden spoons, five bottom four finishes, zero finals finishes, a tanking investigation and six different head coaches. Few then would have been able to believe that at the midpoint of the 2021 AFL season, Melbourne sit 10-1 and, and at the top of the ladder and for mine are clearly the best team in the competition. The improvement began in the 2017 season, Simon Goodwin's first season as senior coach, in which the Demons narrowly missed out on finals by percentage. A disappointing finish to the season no doubt, but it marked a significant improvement on the previous decade of football the club had endured. It set up for an incredible 2018 run, which saw the Demons not only make finals for the first time since 2006, but win two against Hawthorne and Geelong. The Dream Finals run would come to a sticky end in Perth in the prelim final, a result that took the wind out of Melbourne sales well and truly. 2019 would then be a horror year for the club, seeing the Dees plummet to second last on the ladder in a season reminiscent of years under Dean Bailey or Mark Neal. On the back of a pre-season full of surgeries, the Dees struggled with fitness and availability of stars, and the question began to arise as to whether or not 2018 was a false dawn. 2020 was a little more successful, however. It may have started slowly, with the Dees sitting in the bottom four after nine rounds, but they recovered strongly to finish the season in ninth place. Considering their immensely talented list, a ninth place finish was still considered by many to be a disappointing result for the Demons. Having said that, there remained a sense of optimism around the Demons' ability to contend deep in finals in the near future. In 2021, it's fair to say they have exceeded even the most optimistic of expectations. As I record this video, they sit on top of the ladder with 10 wins from 11 games. They boast the best backline in the league, armed with multiple potential All-Australians. Jake Lever is currently the best intercept player in the game, breaking the record for intercepts by any player after 11 rounds, while Stephen May is a popular choice for one of the All-Australian key back positions. Christian Salem is also having a career best season off the half back line, averaging over 25 possessions and ranking elite for intercepts himself, while Trent Rivers is firming to be one of the best pickups out of the entire 2019 draft class. The midfield almost speaks for itself. Christian Petrarca has exploded since the back end of 2019, establishing himself as one of the most damaging players in the game as a half forward midfielder. His 28 possessions a game and 6 clearances don't tell the full story of his dominance, and he's well on track to be a top Brownlow contender come season's end. Right in the thick of that race is his teammate Clayton Oliver as well, who currently leads all comers in the AFL Coaches Award. The midfield is capped off by the brilliant Max Gorn, whose return to form in recent years has seen him become the clear choice for the All-Australian Ruckman position at this point of the season. One clear question mark for Melbourne going into 2021 was their forward line, or more specifically, their scoring power. With Tom McDonald down on his previous form going into this year, the Demons rolled the dice on North Melbourne's Ben Brown in an attempt to establish a key forward focal point. That experiment is yet to be successful, but the Dees have been delighted to find that that hasn't mattered so much. Tom McDonald is in brilliant form, having kicked 15 goals in his last 5 starts and featuring heavily in score involvements. But it's the form of Melbourne Smalls that have added dynamic edge and unpredictability to the way they score. Kaiseya Pickett has enjoyed an incredible season to announce himself as one of the best young talents in the entire league, often bubbing up for bags of goals and ranking elite for tackles inside 50. But perhaps the biggest win in this space has been the form of Bailey Fritch. Fritch currently leads the Demons goal scoring and sits 10th overall in the league. Along with Anthony McDonald tipping Woody, Fritch has scored the most goals of any non-key position player in the league this year, and his ability to consistently hit the scoreboard has given the Demons a crucial avenue to goal in their forward line. So how did the Demons suddenly become so overstocked full of talent on the back of an era where nothing was going right? While the answer is at least partly due to cultural shifts, an investment in their football department, and recruitment of the right people such as Paul Ruse, Simon Goodwin, Mark Williams, Darren Burgess to name a few, there has been an obvious uplift in their strike rate of drafting and developing talent. Here's a snapshot of their high draft picks between 2007 and 2012. It started with the 2007 selection of Kyle Morton, followed by burning two number one picks on Jack Watts and Tom Scully. Jack Trengove and Jimmy Tumpus were also top 5 picks that didn't fulfil their potential, while several other top 20 picks also didn't provide much return on that investment. As you can see, no player on this list of high picks currently plays at AFL level. Contrast that with their drafting since 2012. The tide of success turned when the Dees were able to pick up father-son Jack Viney as a second rounder that year. 
They followed that by nailing top 10 picks in Christian Salem, Christian Petrarca, Clayton Oliver, and to a lesser extent, Angus Brayshaw and Sam Wiedemann. Bailey Fritch was a dream selection at pick 31 in the 2017 draft, while Melbourne's 2019 haul of Luke Jackson, Cozzy Pickett, and Trent Rivers could be potentially talked about for years to come. As you can see, the Demons' ability to make the most of their early draft picks during these years has been pivotal to their rise up the ladder, with all of these players currently in their best 22, and a number of them considered to be amongst the best players in the league for their position. In addition to this brilliant drafting, the Demons have also been able to add key players to their side through shrewd trades, such as Jake Lever, Stephen May, Michael Hibbard, and Jake Melksham. The Demons' stock of elite young talent is enviable to virtually any other club in the league, and as you can see from the list, most of them are still at the start of their prime. To say the potential on their list is starting to click in 2021 is an understatement. It started off with some decent wins against lower ranked sides in Fremantle and St Kilda before an impressive away outing against the Giants in Sydney. When the Demons disposed of the sluggish Cats in round 5, people started to stand up and take notice, although the caveat of the Cats in different form to that point of the season could have been used against them. In round 6, when the Demons disposed of the reigning Premiers, there was no denying their ability to beat quality sides. The blip in the radar was their agonising one point loss to the Crows in Adelaide, but they backed that up by beating the then ladder leaders the Western Bulldogs on their home deck at Marvel and overcoming a red hot Brisbane on neutral ground. They currently sit 10-1 on the ladder with a percentage of 138%, but undoubtedly the aspect of their form that's the most compelling is their form against the best sides of the competition with the Cats, Tigers, Lions and Dogs all sitting in their rearview mirror. The Demons, at this stage of the season, are clearly the team to beat. They have stars on every line, including the best defence in the league, a dynamic and unpredictable forward line, the likely All-Australian Ruckman and two of the leading Brownlow medal fancies. They're in a great position to finish top two and, for me, could easily go all the way this year. But let us know in the comments, how impressed have you been with the Demons this year and how far can they realistically go? As always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel for more footy content. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.